Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You're all very welcome. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy the service this evening. It's our kind of praise. This is the first Sunday in Advent. And although many of the hymns perhaps we've been singing that often, most of them we've sung at some point before, so even by the second or third verse, they should be kind of there. Now, which one of these seats here? Is there a problem with these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? What about, this is really a thing that the people in the back. What about, thank you very much, just for atmosphere, I mean, there's a few people who move up and so that we've got a body of people right to where we've got. And if that's created spaces at the back, if you move up so that we're all together, and the price is the same, it'll sound so much better for all people. <laughs> Thank you. 
kings, where the king of kings, they play, they play, they play, they play, and they play, and they will all join and let this kingdom in. We'll only sing one more verse, but we'll sing the first verse. Don't look at me so puzzled. <laughs> Yeah. 
that sums up what happened in this world. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life of God, to him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. The nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Our next hymn is a modern adaptation of The Lord's My Shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. Stuart Townend, who wrote it, explained when he was writing that he never expected it to become as popular as it's become. And in many ways, it's almost taken over now as the version of the 23rd Psalm. And I suppose of all the Psalms, the 23rd Psalm is the one that we tend to do. Both when things aren't going well, where when we're in the, the valley of the shadows and when life is not treating us as well as it would like, and also at times when life is treated as well, because the familiar words of it resonate with every one of us. So the Lord is my shepherd, I know.
will not be left as we go there. We also must be ready because some of them will come as large as we can expect.
maybe three or four years ago, there was a similar book. And it was entitled Love of Life Led Lent. And what it encouraged by prayers, by readings, by words, by actions, something for each of the days of Lent. Well, this is the Advent Virginal, Virginal, and it's called Make Room for the Manger. And I'm going to just read a few words from the introduction and then one or two of the things that it suggests are ways that we can try and not allow the Christmas of the world, of the other kingdom, if you like, to push out the kingdom that we've just been singing about. Paul Gooder, who wrote the introduction to the book, writes, December can pass in a haze of busyness. There's so much to do to prepare for Christmas, that if we're not careful, we can arrive at the 25th of December with many jobs done, only to discover but the one job that we should have made time for has been missed. This book isn't trying to give you more things to do, but to encourage you to take time to be ready for Christmas. And so, beginning on December the 1st, the actions for each day can be done, no matter what age you are, and we hope that you will be able to find a way to do them in a way that works for you. It was all to talk about one Advent tradition to make the sort of Advent wreath that we have in church throughout the Sundays, but make something similar in our own homes. And rather than just lighting one candle a week, try to light the appropriate number of candles every day. And as you're lighting them, to spend a few minutes thinking, how can I observe Advent set? How can I make sure? that making room for the manger isn't squeezed out of everything else. And here are just one or two of the suggestions. Each day, from the 1st to the 25th, there's a suggestion of something you can do. One of them is make a place in your home where you will think about Adam. And that sounds a bit sort of silly in some ways, but some sort of quiet space, or even just for five or 10 minutes, that you can go to it each day and reflect about what this season is really preparing us for. And I will think back over the last year, what was the most happy in that year, and to thank God for that. And some of the rest, clear out a room, a cupboard, or a shelf, or in the case of my door, a wardrobe, <laughs> and even possibly two wardrobes, and give away as much of it as you can. Maybe do a charity shop. Or just give it away. Take time to think of someone who has been important to you this year and tell them the Christmas card why they mean so much to you. Another suggestion for another day buy some food and give it to your local food bank. And we remind that next Sunday we would do that as we do on each first Sunday of the month. Some of them are a little bit more obscure and perhaps stretch our willingness to think about the kingdom we've just been singing about. Think of someone you wouldn't usually buy a present for, and who may not buy you one, and give them something you think they would really like, not looking for anything in return. What is your favorite Christmas carol? to start thinking about that. Find the words to it. And then rather than singing them, just read them very slowly and let the words sink, out, sink in and think about what they really mean. Think of someone who is very busy at this time of year and offer to do something to help them. And rather than turning on the lights, Turn off the lights and sit in the darkness, even if it's only for a few minutes, to get perhaps some idea and some empathy with those people for whom all the brightness of Christmas will be somewhat hollow because of what's happening in their lives and perhaps how their worlds are falling apart. Make or buy someone's pies or Christmas biscuits 
and give them to someone to say thank you for who they are and what they have done for you. And the last couple, think back over the last year. What do you need to say sorry for? Or perhaps even more important, to let go before Christmas and the leave it
in the course of our prayers this evening, the words of the Book of Peace, you are the center, you are my life. We sing those through as a sort of summary response to the prayers of the two occasions. Let us pray. We think of Advent as a time of waiting. As we wait for Christmas and as we wait for the coming again of the King of Kings. So God, we come to you in our way. We wait with our fears, our anxieties and our frustrations, our pains and our regrets, our shame and confusion. Help us as we wait to know your peace. And as we sometimes wait with impatience, rushing around, preparing for the festivities, not leaving the space to prepare our, our hearts, help us to wait in faith and to know that you are the center, you are my own. And so we say.
those who wait for other purposes and other reasons this night. We remember those who are waiting for our breath. And we remember those who are sitting with loved ones as they wait for them. the God of peace would be with them. And we sum up our prayers as we join together in the words which Jesus us Our
don't want to be critical or anything like that, but uh, let's try that out first.